Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, senior instructor here at VecVest. Always glad to be here. Always glad to have you here as well. Missed you guys last week. But from what I can see, Patrick did a great job on filling in for Trending Thursday, and I appreciate uh, him being a team player and filling in. Last week, uh, yeah, last week until last weekend, I had a fifth year anniversary. My wife and I spent some time away in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's an awesome place, so we had some fun. But that's not what you're here for. You're here to talk about what's going on in the market. And today, we will definitely cover what's going on in the market. Big swing day. Day was down, then it went back up. Now it's going back down. And you can attribute that to a high um, volatility in the market. We're going to be in for days like this where the market's going to have a hard time really determining which direction it really wants to go. So we're going to take a look at the market timing graph, both on an intraday basis and on an end of day basis to get a good feel of what's really going on in the market and what you need to do as investors to take advantage of this. If you're a little bit more aggressive, days like yesterday was a great day to make money in the market but for a short term, days like today, we're still in that downtrend overall. So I still think that the long-term feel of the market is still down. Will we have some opportunities to make some short-term ups? Yesterday, it seems like right now it was a dead cat bounce. But if you were aggressive, you took advantage of some stock trades yesterday, you probably got out of them before yesterday was closed in preparation for today. Your prits or your puts are bringing, baby. I hear you, J.D., all right, and uh, in the Jockey Club this morning, I did put in five stocks to go short with. I did close them out. For those people who are in the Jockey Club, I did close them out when the market took off because I did not want to take on big losses on those stocks, and now they probably turn back around and probably profitable. But again, as a more aggressive trade, I played what the market was giving me. I stayed in them. I was down about three-tenths of a percent, and then I got out of them just in case because volatility is Still high. Kirby, are you here? There you are, being right on the water. We had front row seats. Very scary. But Kirby, glad that you are here. Glad that you are doing well. And I do want to send my my prayers and thoughts out to people who are in uh, Florida right now. This was a bad storm. This was a bad storm. So um, interesting. We're going to start to get some of the effects Coming into this weekend, I actually have a wedding to DJ this Saturday, and it's still going to be in a tropical storm type of a deal, but I think that everything, all the preparations have been made, and you know something? I'm not going to let a little rain stop the joy of two people getting married. So, all right, with that, uh, Europe is at war, only energy now. And you know, Lee, I'm of the mindset that even with yesterday's uh, move in the market to the upside, there was no real good news to... I uh, talk about from that perspective. As you're looking at the market, all of the market, indi uh, all of the indices are down right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up a little differently so I can see. Uh, all of the major indices are down. Wow, how about the Dow is down 660 points? So the market did try to make a move this afternoon. I tried to move higher, hit its head. All of the major indices hit its head on a level of resistance. And now it's retracing from that level of resistance and the market is just in a downfall. We're falling off the cliff. It's just that. But we all look at things like the MTI and the buy to sell ratio. The market is looking for a bottom. The market is oversold. So I think a lot of that move that happened today could have been algos kicking in to try to push some stocks higher. But overall, I think the, in the investor out there is just like, yo, there's nothing good. There's nothing good. And um, that's where we stand. Welcome back, Glenn and VV Nation. Thank you, Marie. I appreciate it. Uh, Zen Master says, Vector Vest is best damn investment show on the interwebs. Man, you know, like that. I, I like that right there. I didn't say it, but I repeated it. Way to go. Thank you for that, uh, Zen Master me. I, I appreciate hearing that. Uh, Kirby says, Coast Guard helicopters flying over, no running water, boats all over the place, and flooded streets. Man. It's just a bad thing going on. But again, Kirby, continue to stay safe, my friend. All right, so as we look at the markets, all of the major indices are down, and they're down in a big way. Normally, what I like to do is go to the news stories. But before I do that today, let's go on market timing graph. And I'm going to put, um, let's go back to the viewers. Let's go look at all of, dang that it. Let's go look at all of the major indices and what they look like. I normally go look at news first, but this is it. Look at this. Um, who, me? What? 
Hit your button. Oh, sorry. What speed? Good Lord, Joey. Stop. 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 Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fight you. I'm going to get beat up, too. Holy, say hi to everybody, Joey. All right. Well, you're going you're gonna to get beat. <laughs> I hate you. All right. So all of the major indices are down in excess of 2%. That's not good. I, and if there's anybody who said that yesterday now is not a dead cap bounce, I think um, that's not the case. So let's go take a look. Let's go take a look. Jay, Jay says, throw down, uh, throw down, Joey and Glenn, let's do it. You know that if we want to go viral, that would be a, that would be something. That, that'd be something. All right. So here's that rebound that the Vector Vest composited after the big gap down today. We came nowhere close to fading the gap today. But here's where I got out of the shorts. I saw this move up. And where did it stop? Right at a level of about $50.72. And look at live. As we're still going down, the three is definitely below the eight. Hi, Glenn. And just buying some WFC today. Hi, Police SWAT. Let's go to the next one, which is the Dow. Same thing. Uh, got up to a level of resistance right about here at about 29, 369, and look at the move. Now, right now, they're getting ready. The Dow looks like it wants to do a little bounce again, but the 3 and the 8 are still negative. Um, there's the S&P, found the level of resistance sitting at about 364. It looks like it wants to bounce as well, but the 3 is still below the 8. Excuse me, and the last one is the Qs, found a resistance intraday today about 273. And looks like it wants to bounce live, but altogether from the market opens. All of the major indices gap down this morning. All right. And for the most part, they're still down going into the current market's conditions. All right. So that's a feel of what's going on. Uh, the big move in the market to the downside. We are susceptible to those swings where we could swing high and swing back low. Swing chariot coming forth to carry me home. But, um, and that's because of the high volatility in the market. Now, let's get to what some news that's moving the market. Germany agrees to 200 billion euro package to shield against surging energy prices. Also, the Bank of England, big news for them. Did they get killed? Holy smoke. But the government stepped in to help to stave that off a little bit. But man, think about that. that that's some, 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 some big stuff. Surging energy prices, uh, they're putting money into their economy to help to stave off some of that stuff. I think Norway's stepping in. I think the U.S. is stepping in to help them with natural gas. Big news here. Warren Buffett buys more, buys more Occidental Petroleum. Good gravy. Um, I, I and if you feel that he's really good on picking stocks, this should be telling you something. I still think that energy is a good play, especially going into the winter months. I still think that uh, energy is a good play because of what's going on with the oil line in, in Russia and what's going on with potentially oil running higher because we're getting into colder months. I've been stating that, stating that, stating that, but it's still been a tough play. But uh, Warren Buffett is buying more Occidental Petroleum. Something to keep in mind. Next one, how about this? Nintendo carries out a 10-for-1 stock split to lure new investors to the Japanese gaming giant. Hmm, is that enough? Is that enough? 10-for-1, it's trading at like 50-some-odd um, dollars or 500, I don't know. It's getting ready to, so that's something to keep your eyes on. Um, he knows what he's doing. Wall Street bet against Oxy, Occidental. Uh, listen, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm telling you, if Warren is looking at it, um, Maybe something we could look at and could drive the stock's price higher. Cam says, Bank of England printing money again. Yep. Why? Because they got jacked up with the with the treasuries falling. They got just so they they said, yo, we gotta do what we gotta do. Um, spy is done. It broke 30, 360, 59. We'll see what happens with that. Um, so interesting on Nintendo. I want us to keep our eyes on that. This is a good stock that I saw. Heartbeam granted a patent for signal transformation from vector electrocardiogram. Woo! I said that all in one take. Yeah, you couldn't do that, could you, Joe? I can. Vector electrocardiogram. Yeah, yeah. You don't, don't, don't be hater. You know why? Because I'm just that good. Anyway, um, I I like anything that deals with the heart or something along those lines. Um. 
and, and diabetes because I I'm a diabetic. I think that those are important drugs. But granted, a patent this could be big. This could be big about the stock Rivian. I you know me how I am about um, EVs. I got a new folder in my watch list called. Uh, EV slash clean energy news. I didn't get any new news on Rivian, um, but um, it's something that I will keep my eye on, eyes on. I still like the EV space. Another one, BIIB. Uh, yeah, I'll get rid of it. BIIB, Alzheimer's progression slowed by Biogen's new drug. That's huge too. Alzheimer's is a big thing in a lot of people. And if you can get a drug that can slow down the progression, even by a little bit, that's big news. So that's two stocks I want us to keep our heart, uh, our eyes on, Heartbeam and BIIB. This was a story that came out yesterday. Uh, the stock jumped up today. We'll see more about it. Another stock, Sidious Pharmaceuticals submits biological license, a BLA, to U.S. Food and Drug Association for treatment of persistent or recurrent cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. The cutaneous. The, stop it. All right, so that's another drug that I like when it comes down to cancerous type of stuff as well. These are companies I just, if nothing else, I just want us to keep our eyes on. There's three drug companies I want us to keep our eyes on. This is a cool story. How about this? Talking about the clean energy space, clean energy announces the opening of Ohio renewable natural gas station for Amazon. Amazon's got a lot of vehicles out there and 19, and, and other trucking fleets. I'm liking this. This is some, now this is on renewable natural gas. I, I, I'm interested to see where this can go. Anybody heard this story? Type of one, if you heard of this story, type of two, if you have not. Type of one, if you've heard of this story, type of two, if you have not. And you know me, I like to bring stuff to the table that you don't know about because I want you to learn some stuff here. This could be another groundbreaking thing. Could be, could be. I Maria knew about this awesome, but most people in the room are typing in twos. This is kind of interesting, huh? And it's clean energy, renewable natural gas for Amazon and 19 other trucking fleets, this is going to be interesting. I want us to keep our... Now, this is not a stock. This is a story about renewable natural gas. And guess what? This could help natural gas even go up even more, right? The demand for that. Just something to think about. Uh, Steve said he also heard about this story. That's awesome. I just... You know me. I like to try to bring some new stuff to the table. And then last but not least, this is another news story. Plug has a one megawatt electrolyzer commissioned at world's first floating offshore green hydrogen production site. So now this becomes a hydrogen story. All right, so this could help push hydrogen or hydrogen stocks up. A floating offshore production site. It was a story, again, that I wanted to bring to the table. Uh, Mark says, also, a hydrogen fuel station is coming soon somewhere between L.A. and Las Vegas. You know something? Nobody talks a lot about hydrogen. Uh, maybe I've got to put a little bit more emphasis in some of my stories on hydrogen. Here's a hydrogen production site and hydrogen fuel stations, as Mark said, as well. So I'm going to keep my eyes on, on hydrogen as well for you guys as well. So those are all of my stories that I have today. Let's get back into the software and let's talk about uh, the big news stocks. Here's the stocks that I got from those stories. We're going to be looking at Heartbeam, uh, Occidental Petroleum, BIIB, Nintendo for the 10-1 split, uh, Citrus Pharmaceutical, and, and Plug. All right, so those are my stocks that I've gotten here. The first thing I want to look at, the only stock that's got good upside potential out of these news stocks is Occidental, uh, Occidental Petroleum. These uh, Occidental Petroleum has the ability to outperform the market over the next one to three years by um, 62%. You know that Warren likes to look at value plays. Could this be a value play? The stock is trading at 61 with a value of 90. It's definitely overvalued, uh, sorry, undervalued with a high relative value. This may not be a bad play from a value play, but it's just tough to be in it right now with RT still being below one. All right. Um, let's go look at the earnings growth. Look at that, 39%. Growing their earnings at a clip of 39%. 
it, it, do you think that um, Warren Buffett is on to something? Type of one. Type of one if you think that Warren is on to something. Lou says hydrogen plug, uh, plug as an as a EV, or sorry, as a clean energy stock. Interested. Going for, hyd- going for hydrogen. A lot of people are saying, yeah. A lot of people are saying, yeah. This is not a bad stock to keep your eye on, even though petroleum has been beaten up. At some point in time, it's got to go back up again, right? But I do like it from a value play perspective. It is undervalued and it's got high relative value. So keeping that in mind. All right, let's go look at the graphs of these stocks. So all of these stocks made the news, right? From one perspective or another. Let's go put these on a three-month graph. Wow, look at Beat. That was news-driven on that patent that it got. A lot of selling pressure, though, in the last couple of days. Watch the big wicks. So this is news-driven, and it's getting higher above average volume recently. Let me get out of the way. Uh, Recently on higher than average volume. But I would keep my eyes on it. I like the story. I like the news behind it. But is it sustainable as a continuing upward move? A lot of selling pressure. So just keep your eyes on that. Gas is already back up there. 311 was low. Uh, gas is going up again, but it's still below $4. It's still below. How much is gas for you that you've seen? You know, you don't look joke that you because you can't hide money. Yeah, that's why. Because you can't hide money. That's why. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to the next stock. All right. So let's go look at the next stock. The next stock is Occidental Petroleum, and petroleum has been beaten up. A lot of the reason why petroleum has been beaten up is because of the demand. The demand is pulled back a little bit. A lot of people were saying that they weren't going to pay the high exorbitant prices for gas. So the demand pulled back a little bit. Um, And then we started releasing a lot of our reserves to help to stem off uh, the price of gas as well. So Keeping all of that in mind, that's the main reason why petroleum has started to move back down. Uh, But it looks like it could be bound and ready to start to move back up. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Uh, I'm still trading WTI. I'm doing halfway decent on it right now. Uh, I did get out of my natural gas boil. I took a big hit in on it. So I got out of that one um, already. Um, Before we move on, Let me do this. Before we move on, let me plug this one more time. Tomorrow is the big day. Tomorrow is the big day that we're doing the Stock Market Masterclass. September 30th, 2022 starts at 9 a.m. It is free. It's free from 9 a.m. to about 4, 35 o'clock when we're done. If you can't watch it live, it will be up on our YouTube channel so you can come back home from work and watch it at least sometimes over the weekend. Folks, there's going to be a lot of great information there. I will be giving a presentation at about 10 o'clock. Folks, if you can come and be there live, we'd love to have you. If you want to invite friends, again, you can invite them at no cost to them. We're trying to get as many people to show up to this masterclass tomorrow. Um, yeah, and well, move your thumb. On, uh, are you, will lunch be provided? Yes, you will be providing your own lunch. All right, Lewis says, are you sending a recording? I believe there's going to be a link if you register. You got to register that if you do register, we'll send out a link to you guys, I believe, for the recording. Do we get a discount if we're elite members? Yes, Mark. You get free 99 instead of free. You get free 99 instead of free. All right, and Robert says, you're going to bring your dog. You can bring your dog. Uh, You're there like swimwear. Stock Market Masterclass being sponsored by Cafe Bustello and Glenn's Choice of EVs. I like that. I'm going to put that. I like that. Cafe Bustello and Glenn's Choice of EVs. I like it. Uh, uh, We got to have some bacon in there. You want some? I'll do some bacon in there. We got to have some bacon in there. All right. But yes, folks, this happens tomorrow at 9 o'clock, September 30th, and it is free. I can't stress that enough. All right. Glenn, can you make the market go up again? Only if you show up for the stock market, uh, stock market masterclass tomorrow, then I'll make the market go back up. All right. So there's Occidental Petroleum. A lot of selling pressure on it today. Glenn, you cooking bacon in the Blackstone Grill for this event? Yep. And I'm going to eat it at home. All right. I just had to order a top for my Blackstone. I did that. I put it on an Amazon order. I went and looked at my Amazon order. It was like $300. 
So I, huh? I got, I got the grill. I just need the top. I just need the top for the grill. No. Yeah, so I need the top for the grill. And then I had to get some cleaning stuff and I had to reseason. I'm going to have to reseason it. All right, next stop. BIBB on the Alzheimer's drug. Big pop yesterday. A little bit of a pullback. I'm telling you that that's all going to be profit taking. A lot of people, before the news came out, the stock was trading at 197, went up as high as um, 283. That's a lot of profit taking. A lot of people, a lot of people took the profits. I still think that uh, the news on the Alzheimer's drug is still a good one. Reminder, hit the like button for Glow and Glenn and Joey. There you go, Robert. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. If you see Spy Cross the 200 EMA, just know it doesn't belong there. <laughs> I like that, JD. I like that, JD. All right. It don't belong there. All right. And what other stocks did I have in my list? You know something? I don't know if the split on Nintendo is worth it. Uh, this is a three-month graph. The stock just is all over the place. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the split to try to get more people. It's trading at 51. If it's a 10 for one split, what does it go down? Does it go down to $5? I, it does, is it worth it for people to go get into Nintendo? I don't know what news, what good news is coming out of Nintendo. All right. So there's the story. I just, I'm not feeling the stock. Uh, CTXR, another drug a pharmaceutical sitting in a sideways channel, just waiting for some good news. Some new good news came out coming off this level of support. The three and the eight end of day looks like it's about ready to cross. Um, but I've got a wick on the upside and the downside. I like the news. I'd really like to see it get out of its channel first. And the last stock is plug plug is getting beaten up. A lot of clean energy stocks are getting beaten up. I'm maybe hoping that the news, this hydrogen thing, hydrogen floating thing, works out we'll see all right so maybe they needed to put out some news to stem off this downward movement that's going on in there as well michael says glenn is any asset safe in this market which would think that many of these would be oversold by now you know something i i'm at the point that i think there's a lot of stocks that are oversold but i am going to point out some stocks that i think are safe for this market in one of my watch lists for you all right, so I think I'm going to address that for you, Michael. All right, so those were the stocks that were making the big news today, looking at their graphs. Hottest industries, you know something? There's only really one hot industry right now. Anybody want to tell me what the hottest industry is? I know if you've got VectorVest, you already know. What's the hot industry right now? Energy says the bacon is next to the extra booth. Be sure to get some. Yeah, I still got me some extra. I got a lot of extra. And it looked good yesterday. Don't look so good today. There you go. Carson is right on it. Uh, Michael is right on it. ETF shorts. That is the hot industry right now. So I got nothing that I really wanted to look at for hot industries today. Now, for those people who are a little bit more aggressive, I do have some short plays here for you. Let's go see if they pan out. All of these stocks at one point in time today were all over 10%. How about this stock that we looked at today? We made a little bit of money. We scalped some money on this as a, um, a day trade today. But let's go see if any of these are worth it for short-term plays, all right? We're going to view the stock graphs. We're going to put all of these on a one-month graph. Let's see if these are worth it. So all of these stocks, again, at some point in time, were up at least 10% today. HPCO was a day trade, a lot of give back on the stock, a lot of volume on the stock. Marijuana stock, you know, when they move, they move just like that. You know, I put my hands upon my hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. And right now it's dipping. All right. Um, so we had an opportunity to make some quick money on this this morning. Um, but there's a lot of volume behind it. Um, market may go up tomorrow. The market may go up tomorrow. It may go down tomorrow. You know, that's the thing with the high volatility, the market can go in each in each and every direction. All right. Robert says HPCO was awesome scalp for me. Thanks to Glenn pointing this out in our live jockey club. Join VectorVest. You will love it. So, again, we had an opportunity to make some money, and I'm glad we took the money and ran. All right, we took the money and ran, and we went on from there. I'm doing my part to hold up the alcohol industry. Wow, Mark. Mark, I'm about to put you in timeout. All right, ATXI. Uh, nice move up. Now, interesting, that nice at least 10% move today. 
I like that a couple of days ago, the three went above the eight. It went through a level of resistance and still currently above it. From a short-term perspective, it's another drug stock. Um, this may not be a bad play. This may not be a bad play to take from a short-term perspective. Watch these wicks, though. All right, what else? Wow, SMTI, don't know the news on this. Big move. Actually, let's go see if we can find some news on it. Let's go see if we can find some news on it. That's a nice big open candle. All right, that's a nice big open candle. I want to see, Joey, what did you do to my internet? Ooh. Interesting. All right, the news doesn't want to come. I, I just clicked on the news. It, it just doesn't want to come up. I don't know what the news is on it. It doesn't matter. Nice big open candle. I like it from short-term perspective. The 3 8 cross, not as big a wick as on many of the other stocks. It is above average. You know something? That may not be a bad short-term play. Next stock in the list, ooh, SSMT. Nicely went up, but see the closed candle? The price now is lower than the open. The stock is giving back a lot of, this is all profit taken. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't know if I like that longer term. Same thing with this one. Look at that big closed candle. That's all profit taking. So I don't like it for a short-term play. And ADTX, another drug. A few of these stocks in here are drug companies. Um, there's only a couple that I liked. Actually, there was only one that I really liked going forward was SNTI. Keep your eyes on that. All right, swing trade plays. For those people who are looking at Longer term plays right now. I've only got two stocks in here. All right. Fundamentally, uh, these stocks have good upside potential, not entirely safe, but they're both going up in price right now. <coughs> Excuse me. There were only two stocks that I liked as far as a swing trade for right now. Three month graph. Look at that. How many of you uh, know of INSW? It's a, a transportation ship. I like the stock. Type of one if you know of INSW, type of two if you don't. I do like the move over the last three months. The stock is leveling out. Uh, the stock is leveling out. Let's go see if it can break through that line of resistance. And keep in mind that with the market moving down as much as it is, much as it is, that um, and that's where I get my stocks, my swing trade stocks from, Lewis, is I get them from Midas Touch. I like the move on this stock. I like the move. And you know something? In a downward trending market, it's holding its own. And the next one is HLIT. A lot of long time of consolidation, but moving up. Still better uh, on the three-month graph, bottom left, top right. I do like them. So there's two stocks out there that I do like for you from a swing trade perspective. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Speculative plays. What speculative stocks do I have? None. I, I got no speculative plays with all of this downtrending market. My day trade plays, uh, this is I got these from the Derby. What do you think they should be? Playing the market to the downside. If I shorted all of these stocks today, I'd be up nicely. All right, they're all down today. So if I go to put these on, uh, my, my day trade plays for today would be more, more or less stocks to sell short. Look at these stocks. All right. Look at these stocks going down as a day trade play, big drop, really consolidating, still now at session lows. Um, the next one is Iova, big move to the downside. I'd like to see it break below this level of $9.47 to show that it's going down further, sitting in a little bit of a channel, but definitely lower than it was from the start of the day. I'm not feeling this one nearly as much if I'm shorting because I'd like stocks that have a little bit more volume than this but it's definitely moving lower. Wow, look at that. Gap down and just going way down, 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 uh, R-A-D-I. Glenn, for some reason, this is holding C-E-N-X. What is holding? For some reason, this is holding C-E-N-X. Well, I'm not understanding what you're asking me, my friend. I'm not sure what you're asking me. What do you think the best time to start buying more bank stocks? You know something? I'm gonna help you with that. Let's go to Industry Viewer, and let's go see. I'm, I'm going to answer that question for you right now, Police SWAT. Bank, let's go find the industry. I'm going to help you out right now as far as bank stocks are concerned. Let's go back again. Why not track the whole industry? So which bank are you looking at? Let's go with Bank Investment. 
Let's go with bank investment. All right. And as an industry, it's number 39 out of 222. All right. No, let's go. Uh, let's view the stocks in here. Let's go see. I believe well, uh, Wells Fargo should be in there. I believe Wells Fargo should be in there. Uh, how many stocks in here? 26. Let's sort this by symbol. Wells is not in here. Interesting. All right. Let's start here, though. Let's start here. All right, let's go right click, view the industry graph. You want to know when the right time to be in bank stocks? Let's go put this on a one month graph. Police spot, let's go look. All right, how about when the three goes above the eight? Does that make sense? Police SWAT and everybody in here, does that all, does that make sense to you, especially if you're trying to gauge when to get into an, any industry? Always look at the industry graph. Does that make sense for you, please, SWAT? All right. So now to answer your question about multi-regional, let's go see what stocks are in there. I want to see. I want to see the ones that have Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Might be in here. There it is. All right. So that is in bank multi-regional. Bank multi-regional. Uh, bank investment is number 29 and bank multi-regional is actually better at number 29. Let's do the same thing. View the industry graph. Cause I think that that's a good question with the rising interest rates. You would think that the banks would start being the beneficiary of it. So let me answer your question. Ooh, uh, police SWAT. Does that answer your question? Why not wait for the three to go above the eight before you get into it? All right. Day trading is a bad business. I don't believe that, Jay, uh, Lou. I don't, I don't believe that at all. I think that how many people in, in the jockey club that are in here have made money day trading? Type of one. How many people in here right now are part of the jockey club, our day trading room, and have made money day trading? All right, so Lou, I, I'm not with you on that. And I'm going to let the jockey club people point it out. All right, I'm going to let the jockey club people point it out. Now, either, either they're going to back me up or I'm going to fall flat on my face. We'll see. All right, either, they, either I'm going to fall flat on my face or they're going to help me out. We'll see. Uh, and, I, and you know something? I'll take this one too. Bill gave me an honest answer. He says, one but I've lost more than I've gained. I'll take that as an answer because I will say that day trading is a more aggressive way of trading in the market and it ain't for everybody. So I will say that. I will, I will and I honestly like the honest answer that came from Bill. I thank you for that, Bill. I, I'm all for that, but it ain't for everybody. And, and, and you know something, not every type of trading is for everybody. Not every type of trading is for everybody. I actually thought more of the jockey club people would step up, but that's all right. Maybe I don't have a ton of them in here. That could be the case. All right, that could be the case. Real-time searches and indicators really help day trading. Uh, I'm with that as well. Um, but um, listen, it, it is what it is. All right. Um, so that was that was a little off the beaten path. To answer your question, police SWAT about knowing when to get in back into the banks. Let's go back to my watch list viewer. Let's go back. I'm almost done. Six. Oh, I got some picks for you today. I got my own picks that I want you to keep your eyes on. I was parched. I had to drink. Um, let's go. What am I looking at? Auto fit all the columns. Here's some stocks I want you to keep your eyes on. All right, they're down today, but I always believe that one day doesn't make a trend. And actually, as I look at as I look at all of these stocks, view the stock graph. I'm going to put all of these onto a three month graph. Why do I like them? For the most part, they are moving from the bottom left to the top right. I'm thinking CPRX might be giving you another opportunity to buy. I need two things to happen here. I do like this move up. Over the last three months, it is higher than it was three months ago. I'm looking for a couple of things on CPRX. I'm looking on an end-of-day basis for the three to go above the eight, and I need for us to break through this level of resistance of $13.10. All right, 
Here's another stock. Was good back here. Fell. Found a solid level of support. I'd like to see it continue to move higher. I've got a price target sitting at about $23.43. It's trading at $20.16 right now. RT is above one, showing me that the stock is back in an uptrend. I'd like to see it get out of its own way, though. What other stock do I have for you? ASC, another transportation ship. It's fallen, but I think it might have found a level of support sitting at eight eighty two. Let's see if a couple of things can happen. One, if the three can go back above the eight and break through this level of resistance sitting at $10.12. And my next stock, PB, peanut butter jelly time, another petroleum stock. Bottom left, top right fell, found the level of support. The three and the eight have crossed down day to day. Looks like a little bit of a... Um, bearish harami. Let's see if that if that gets confirmed tomorrow. USDU currency country, man, bottom left, top right, three days down, but the three and the eight are still holding. I would like to keep my eyes out on that one. And those are my stock, my Glenn picks for you this week. Jockey Club, Monica says, Jockey Club has been great for me, both in monetary and knowledge gains. Thank you for that, Monica. Energy says, Glenn, what's your take on the EV charging money and funds, especially now that all 50 states have been approved to use the funds from the Department of Energy? I think that a lot of people are talking about that the grid is not ready. Um, and I don't disagree with you. But I think that as the money goes out to the states to, to build up the infrastructure for charging, you're going to see it change. I, the grid will be ready. Now, time frame, I don't have a definitive time frame, but I think that everyone knows that if the demand for EVs is increasing, that the grid for charging them needs to be updated. And I think that's going to happen now that the states are giving the money out from the infrastructure bill out to the states to build up their uh, charging. Off to, off to the swing trade class. Have a good day, Monica. Uh, John says the life insurance industry group is looking like it wants to move up. People will be dying to get in once the move. Uh, uh, here we go. That's for you, John. Sigh. But insurance is not a bad play. Insurance is not a bad play. Here's my new folder. All right, here's my new folder, EV slash clean energy news. I'm going to keep up on this. x big news yesterday, live. Stock was up 18%, and guess what? It gave it pretty much all back today, and we already talked about the plug news. So every week, every week, I will be keeping up. You know me, I'm, I'm big on the EV space because I still think that it gives you guys an opportunity to make some money in the stock market. So uh, when I've gotten good news coming out on Thursdays, I got it in my folder. And you know, the last thing, most importantly, if the market is going down, where should you guys be putting your money? I've got 10 contra ETFs that I want you to guys keep on, keep your eyes on. These are all rocking and rolling nicely up today. Well, the market's down bigly today, but all of these are up. These are 10 high volume contra ETFs that I want all of you to pay your attention to. Um, let's go take a look at these on a graph. View the stock graph. Let's go peep them out, put them on a three month graph. Look at these movements. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about them. XROF has a vector vest sell signal. Yes, yeah, Steve. The only reason why I have as many shares of XRO as I do is because of the future potential of it. And it's a coil, it's an energy coil that if this takes off, it's going to be in every electric motor. In every electric motor. XROF has got the, uh, the uh, possibility at the price that it is now at just pennies to go up in multi hundreds of dollars. All right. Um, my suggestion is to do some homework on x -Roth. Check it out. It is a horrible stock to be in. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, but they've got a lot of NDAs. There's a lot of future potential. There's a lot of, and I believe strongly in that potential on what the stock can do. Is E-X-R-O-F is in Frank. E X R O F. And for anybody who wants to downplay it, you can. All I ask is that you do your homework and understand what the company is all about and what the potential is long term. All right. That's all. Thank you, Boston. All right. So 
Um, I, that's all. I'm, I'm not pushing it on anybody, nor would I ever. Uh, I get asked questions about it, and I'm just answering the questions. That's all that I'm doing. All right. Uh, but look at socks. Socks S moving. Fang D on the tech stocks moving. These are all contras. Hibs. I personally own this one. Hibs. It's moving. Big down day yesterday after the big up day. Uh, um, but on a big up day, but I like the bounce off support. All of these have positive uh, the threes above the eights. Yang on the Chinese market, the short for the Chinese market. SQQQ on the Qs. Now, LABD is an interesting one. When it moves, it moves just like that. When I move, it moves just like that. Hey, DJ, yo, pull that, pull that, pull that stock on back. Anyway. I'd like to see the three go back above the eight, but overall from this low, it is moving higher. What else is in here? Wow, tech stocks. Look at that. Look at that. SRTY, TZA, Webs. T I mean, I, I, I want to leave you guys with, with the overall market being down. Contras are a good way to be, but, but let me back this up a little bit. Let me back that thing up right there. Let's go to the market timing graph, put it on the three-month graph. I want you to be aware that the MTI and buy to sell ratio are at the levels where the market is oversold. All right. Does everybody in the room understand that? I want a type of yes or a no. And I need everybody to understand that. You know why that? Because I don't want nobody to flap their jibs later. I don't want not listen. I don't want <laughs> nobody to flap your jibs later and be like, oh, you didn't get us prepared. You telling us after the fact. I, think that, I don't want to freaking hear it. All right. That's why I'm asking everybody right now to type a yes in the room. Because when you do and you come out me, I'm going to take a picture of this. And said, all you people in here understood what the flying flip I said in regards to what's going on with the market right now. I am letting you know that the market is at a level where it's looking for a bottom. It's looking for a bottom. Wait a minute. It's looking for a bottom. Doesn't mean that it's here right now and it can stay there for a minute. Be careful. All right. On the days that the market gives you the opportunity to still sell stocks short, dangerously ambitious said, repeat, uh, repeat, please. The market is looking for a bottom. Just be careful. I think the opportunities for the market to still go down based upon what's going on is still prevalent. I still think we got more downside. All we need is some kind of positive catalyst for the market to pop off. And it's really just going to need a spark before you get a bottom fishing opportunity. All right, so just, and yesterday, let's go take off what happened yesterday. I asked a lot of people yesterday, do you think that yesterday was the blast off phase? It looked like it was a good up day. Well, a couple of things didn't happen. One, we didn't get a primary wave up. Two, in the one day derby winners, we only had three bottom fishing searches. So there's signs, there's signs to look for before you start bottom fishing, folks. The market is looking for a bottom, but if the keyword is looking, we could be looking for um, a minute. Keep me, put me on my last slide. All right, folks. Um, Brian says, I think it was not the blast off. Well, it wasn't because we got a big down day today. No, it wasn't the, it wasn't the blast off. But yesterday I could ask the question, but I'm just showing you the signs. We didn't get a primary wave up. And on the end of day, looking at the one day winners, they were not all bottom fishing. Those two things together tell me that it was not the blast off. All right. Somebody said there was a quick question you wanted to ask. I saw that. Where is it? I forget. Quick question. If you are buying a stock based on the three and the eight, how much of a trail would you use for it if it just crossed? You know, K Montecore. I'm of the mindset, I'm going to give a stock no more than 5 to 7% against me. All right? I, that, that's, that's my personal opinion. I don't want to lose a lot of money. So I'm, I'm going to say no more than 5% against me or 7% max. So now, if I'm swing trading, about 15% max. If I'm swing trading, looking at a stock that I'm trying to hold long term, no more than about 15% uh, max. But if I'm day trading, I'm looking at 5 to 7% to get out because I don't want the loser to become a big loser. Does that make sense, K Montecore? Does that make sense? All right. How many likes did we get today? 60. Are, are you serious? With the information that we put out there today, are you freaking kidding me? 
fine. It is what it is. I'm still not going to stop trying to give you the best information that I definitely can. That's, that's all I want to do. And I'm going to do that for every trending Thursday is I'm going to strive to give you the best information on what's going on in the market's conditions to help you guys out. All right. Whether you like it or not, dude, I hope the master class is explained some of this. We're going to explain a lot of this. I'm going to give a talk tomorrow that talks about how to really look at a stock and, and, and um, analyze a stock. No matter what the stock is, I'm going to show you how to effectively use the VectorVest system to analyze any stock out there based on our indicators. So once again, uh, the class is tomorrow. All right, the class is tomorrow. Um, go to www.vectorvest.com forward slash masterclass. Joey has it pinned to the top of the chat for you. All you got to do, folks, is click on it and register. It's a free registration, and I want you guys to send it out to all of the people in your social circles. It is absolutely free. And we're going to have some fun, but we're going to teach you some of the things that you need to take your investing to the next level. All right. With that, folks, thank you for being here. How many likes did we get up to? 80? It's all right. You know, one of these days, instead of bringing my A game, I'm going to bring my B game. Maybe my B game will get more likes and get more views. Maybe I'm just going to go, yo, I'm here. The market's moving down. Peace, I'm out. If I do that, I bet you I got a lot of likes then. And it might even freaking go viral. With that, folks, thank you for being here. Jim on um, um, Facebook says, will it be recorded? I can't make it tomorrow. And actually, Jim, it will be. It will be recorded. And you got to make sure you register, though, Jim. Go to register for it, and I believe we will send out a link to um, the, the, the recording. Truth Oil Sales Snake Oil doesn't sell. Truth Oil Sales Snake Oil doesn't sell. I don't get that. Anyway, anyway. Thank you for being here. Um, adios. Arrivederci. Ciao. Au revoir. Sayonara. Aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii, all my folks in uh, Florida. Prayers and um, thoughts go out for you guys. Uh, bom dia. Salam. Shalom. Namaste. Yasu. Till next time, folks. See ya.